Imagine your first potential customer downloads your app trial and this happens. Exiting narrator. What the f Look, I don't know about you, but I don't want people feeling like they're downloading a virus, nor do I want them punching their keyboard through their table because they had a bad install experience. At this stage, our app has been compiled to protect our source code from prying eyes, but now it's time to aggregate all of its components into an easy to use software installer which users can download from our website. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to create an installer for your app using InnoSetup on Windows. While I don't have access to a Mac, I've included a link in the description for a tool that builds DMG installers, the Apple equivalent of an install wizard. If you give the GitHub repo a visit, it should point you in the right direction. Similarly, if you're using Linux, app images are probably your best bet for creating a standardized app experience across all major distros. I've also linked the docs in the description. With platform specifics out of the way, let's get started. First head over to the InnoSetup website, navigate to the download page, and download the latest stable release. Afterwards, run the setup, select an install location if required, and then proceed with the defaults. While you could install encryption support, I don't see much of a reason since all our app installer will do is copy our obfuscated executable to the install location. Once the install finishes, launch InnoSetup and either select create new script file using the setup wizard, or alternatively, select the file menu and then new. Once you reach the application information page, simply enter the name of your app, a version number, a publisher name, and a website URL. To make maintaining versions a little easier as you develop, I recommend using semantic versioning as it gives each digit a clear meaning. It'll also help you avoid the degenerate versioning system you probably use for assignments and reports. Yeah, definitely not a virus. Next, for the application folder, we'll just have the installer create a directory in the end user's program files while allowing them to configure it if necessary. In terms of files, we only have one, the main executable itself. If your app happens to require other dependencies, which you need to include separate to the main executable, you'd add them to the other application files section. One thing to keep in mind though is that the program files directory requires escalated privileges to write in. So if your program tries to write something in the installation folder, it'll throw an error. Instead, if you need to store some local or temporary data somewhere, you can use the app data environment variable and temp file module respectively, both of which are cross-platform compatible. Since our application doesn't pass any command line arguments, nor does it process data with a certain format, we don't have a need for any file associations. However, if we did, this is where we'd configure it. Next, we stick with the defaults, creating a start menu shortcut and optional desktop shortcut. In the documentation section, you should include the end user license agreement you need users to accept before installation progresses. To repeat a previous disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, the following is not legal advice, and materials presented in this video are for educational purposes only. Given this, in this section you should probably include details related to copy right, the prohibition of reverse engineering, whether your software has a warranty, as well as any other legal clauses required by your dependencies. While I fully recommend speaking to a legal advisor, if you need something to help you get started, you can find some templates online if you do a simple search. To write up your license, create either a rich text format or text file, and insert the contents of your agreement. For now I'll stick with the only legal advice I'm allowed to give, and then proceed with adding it to the installer. For the install mode, we'll leave it as the administrative default as we've configured our install location as the program files directory. Next, select any languages your program supports, and then select the directory where you want the compiled installer to be copied to. For this, we'll use the same directory as the executable itself. Afterwards, change the base file name to whatever you want the installer to be named. We'll be updating this shortly in the script, so anything will do for now. You can also update the installer icon if you wish. Finally, I recommend using compiler directives as it effectively allows us to use variables in our script. With the script wizard finished, we'll now take a look at the script itself and select no to the immediate compilation prompt. As you can see, there are several preprocessor definitions at the top of the script, which insert their corresponding value into the code below. The remainder of the script contains all the necessary configurations to install our app on a Windows machine. For now, all we're going to do is create another definition containing our app name without any space characters, and then update our installer's base name to include our definition and a version number. Now we can save the script and click compile. Once this finishes, we can test our installer out by navigating to our output folder and running it. This is exactly what your end users will see when they run the setup file on their own machine. And at the end, we launch our program and see that everything is working as expected. We're now ready to start setting up a licensing server and connecting it to our payment processor. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. And if you're pumped to start integrating licensing into your application, watch this video. Until next time.